How's it going guys? Another day, another light review. Today I got this brand new release, the GVM just put it out there. This is the GVM LED 1200 LED lights. So today I'm going to be talking about the GVM LED 1200. You can buy it as a single unit and today I'm going to be actually reviewing the kit which comes with the two lights themselves, two light stands, two power adapters, two power cords, and to my surprise, they even including this Sony NPF V-mount option here, one for this light, the other one for the other light. They actually have the option if you don't want to use a V-mount battery for some reason, if you don't have one, whatever that is, they let you uh, use your regular Sony NPF battery so you can actually slide this right there and start using your light just like another light that takes a regular Sony MPF battery. That to me is a super nice thing because usually this is the type of accessory that's definitely optional and that will cost you probably $19 or $25 something like that but again this comes included with this light. To me that's a big bonus. And the power supply which is always a good idea that I have here. I usually velcro everything because I like to mount this on a pole on a stand here instead of having the power adapter dangling like that and also to avoid stress on this uh, power jack over here. So if you're interested in doing exactly what I did here, eBay, Amazon, they have this little furniture self sticky little pad here that you can actually um, put on the bottom here. This will not damage your adapter, this comes off very easily. First here you put the core side of the velcro and then another one to wrap around and then you uh, mount this on a light stand by pressing firmly against the pole, loop the velcro through and you're good to go. Now the design of this light stand here is kind of cool, they made it like reverse because it's easier and more compact to fit in whatever bag you try to uh, transport this with. So to open is effortless, the stand is already open, this simple. So if you want to do this, you're going to make the light unstable. Now for the uh, maximum stability, look how wide this stand opens. This is really good, the fact that they designed this like this. Because the light is not going anywhere when you have this much real estate on the floor. And as you can see, it's wide enough. But this is the super wide mode. Most of the time I think I'm gonna place uh, the light like this if I have the space for it. But what you don't want to do is to set up the light like this because the light is not gonna have any kind of stability. It's gonna tilt very easily. So the correct way is around here. And the knobs here, they're nothing luxurious or nothing extraordinary. They just do the job. You know, you set whatever height they want to set, tighten the knobs, good to go. Now to put this away the same ease, you just keep pushing down like this and it folds that easy. To open, gravity does its own thing here. So I really like to stand, put it away, it's like that. No effort whatsoever. Nice. And it also comes with these two bags, one bag for each light of course, and this is a padded material, top and bottom. Today is June 27th, 2020. At the time of making of this video, this light as a kit at B&H runs for $799. And if you're picky with your lights, at least I am very picky with my equipment. So these bags that they include here, it is padded enough to protect your light either on the top or the bottom. So with the bag the way it is, there's no particular place for you to secure your power adapter or your power cord. You don't want to be putting your light over here, bouncing all over the place, plus putting the power supply and the power cords on top of the light, which you're definitely going to scratch your $800 pair of lights over here. When you open the box, the original box, the cardboard box, you will see they come with a nice foamy material instead of the regular styrofoam. And it looks like what GVM had in mind is for you to actually take advantage of that shipping material to reinforce and uh, the light is going to stay here tight inside without moving. So when you actually close the zipper here with that light and the packing material inside, the shape of this bag is going to be nice and fatty, exactly the uh, the full height of what this bag sewing is here. So this takes a very good shape and the light is extremely secure inside because it is padded and plus you have the uh, packing material inside the bag. So here I have the 50RS, this is an RGB light but as you can see the body, this part over here looks identical to this one including the front of the light as you can see. So the case that this came with I actually prefer the way they used to make it before, I don't know if they changed the way the design instead of having that case, I prefer that case because this has a dedicated slot for the light, for the power adapter, for the power cord, everything in its place and then when you close the case nothing shakes but this is the case they come with and it is what it is. So first I'm going to be talking about the external hardware of the light, its components and also some great improvements that I'm going to be covering later with this barn doors here. So starting with its body, it's a full aluminum and including the barn doors also made of aluminum. This light has a CRI-097 and when you're shopping for these lights as you probably noticed there are two types of LEDs that the manufacturers from several brands including this one here they make and this one features a 45 degree beam angle which gives you a more concentrated more powerful light throw especially the fact that this has the uh, lens uh, LED type 
versus the uh, GVM50RS, which is more on a fuller type. So these lenses here allow you to throw the light at a greater distance, especially when you remove the diffuser. This particular model, they're still making the very heavy, milky type of diffuser because I see a lot of GVM lights, and now they're including a less diffusion material. So I'm very glad that they actually include this very heavy diffusion over here, which is a big plus. And here's the front of the light, as you can see, it has 1,224 LEDs. This is why they call the GVM LED 1200. Now the LEDs themselves, as you can see here, they didn't waste any space at all on this board. As you can see, there's over 1,200 LEDs here. So they're very compact, very close to each other. Now the cool thing about this light, because it can be very powerful. Right now I'm looking at 1,200 LED lights, a full blast 100%. And as you can see, it comes with a very nice diffuser, especially when you lift this, you're gonna have the whole two stops of gain in light output. If you want a very nice soft light, you can actually do it. If I want a lesser diffuser, all I have to do is put a Roscoe filter here and remove this uh, heavy duty diffuser that they have. But for like faces and everything, I would highly recommend that you uh, put this diffuser back down here. Now I'm assuming you're buying the LED 1200 especially for power, right? So if you want to throw a lot of light in the background or anything that needs to uh, reach far as far as the light goes, especially if you remove this diffuser here, you're going to be blessing a lot of light thanks to this lens system LEDs here, which is designed to project light very far. I'm shooting at the uh, ISO 850 with my C200 Mark II Canon. The uh, shutter speed is uh, 1 75th of a second. The aperture is f4. I'm using a Canon 24 to 105, which is a rather dark lens. I'm actually going to be turning off my key light and actually uh, set this light to 10% which you can see, it allows you to shoot at a very close proximity here in case you want to shoot something that's that close to this light. I love when they do this because some lights that I see, the 10% or the 1%, it looks like 45%. This light here can be very bright, as you can see, or as gentle as this much. So I'm actually six inches away from the light. And when you go back to full power, you have this blast in your face here. One thing that I really like about this light is because the way it behaves when you dim the light or change the color temperature, everything is like smooth and soft. First of all, the intensity, when you do it quick like that, there's a little ramp, a gradual ramp going on. When you set the light back to 10%, there's a little curve there. It's like, you know, I really like this. It's very elegant and this can be actually very useful, especially if you are recording and you need the light to kind of uh, increase its intensity during the filming. As you can see, this is stepless. And also the same thing for the color temperature. As you can see, you can gradually switch from daylight to tungsten. So there's no, tra -tra -tra -tra, you know, it's smooth. It doesn't delay too long, just like a half a second, but I really like this feature, especially if you have to dim the light down for some reason in a live production when your camera is actually recording something. These barn doors, they open and collapse very easily, but if you are a heavy user with this light, of course, expect a little bit of wear and tear. Occasionally, you're gonna have to screw. We're using a regular screwdriver with this little uh, screw here that hold the barn door in place, and then it's gonna feel as new as it came from the box when you just open the box. Everything is gonna be nice and sturdy again. When you close the barn doors, even though this is not designed to do anything scientifically precise, don't expect to have full control of the, uh, the light on the barn door because that's the limitation that panels like this have. Unless you have a way to uh, extend the barn doors here and then you see the big control of the light. But the way it comes with this, you have a small amount of control. They do the job good, but don't expect anything precision wise. That also includes every single panel, either from GVM, from Near, from Godox. They all have a limitation on the barn doors. That's the nature of the size of the barn doors. Now I'm gonna be bringing up something to you guys here because apparently GVM listens to customers' feedback, including mine, because I complained this on my video on the 50RS, this very light that I review here, and then apparently they took immediate care of the situation because this barn door is here to remove and to put it back is a nightmare, and this nightmare does not exist in this light here. And as you can see, the body and the barn doors of both lights, the 50RS and the LED 1200, they are literally identical, other than there's a different uh, control panel in the back, but the body wise is the same exact light. So, this light here was a nightmare to remove and to put the barn doors back because, first of all, these little screws here, the threads, they were so skinny, even a very careful person such as myself, you can easily easily uh, strip the threads here. They took care of this by making a thread that's at least four times fatter, thicker than this one here. So there's no way you're gonna be damaging the threads on this panel, thanks to the larger tab here. 
Another massive improvement they did, I was so happy to find out this new design that they made here, is the actual tabs from the bond was because the 50RS, again, this is the old style. The new 50RS, they come with the plastic bond doors, but guess what? They are lined perfectly and the screws, they are also thicker. Now these tabs here, I can't even get it started with the problems that I was having. First of all, you have to fight by uh, aligning, try to align these uh, things up and down to coincide with the holes. And also, I don't think the manufacturer, they even realized that they needed to flip the other uh, two tabs over here because what happened was this barn doors was about quarter inch thicker or bigger than the actual body so even if you sit flush here on the side when you are screwing on the other side the tabs instead of sitting flush with the body like this they were bent this way so the tabs they are always crooked so when you screw it in a lot of people will over tighten and not only it doesn't look as pretty because it's not flush you can see the thing is not flush so I have to manually flip this and this material is incredibly hard I have to take all kinds of kinds of caution not to break my barn doors but I successfully could invert this thing here now this whole thing is sit flush this way and this way so they eliminated this entire problem here with this new design which by the way what I recommend that you change the barn doors is to flip the thing side up like this and then you can actually screw everything here and gravity won't let the barn door fall so this tabs here they're incredibly easy to remove the barn doors I mean changing the barn door should be the easiest thing in the world but not with this guy trust me if we have this light and when you get this type of model here the new redesigned barn doors you're gonna be in heaven because the difference here is astronomical this light mounted vertically on a light stand, you can actually tilt the barn door to a certain degree, but if you need all the tilting control, all you have to do is uh, to set the light to 90 degrees because it comes with a dual way spigot, and then you have full articulation of the barn door to any height you want. And here's the back of the panel, which is self-explanatory. The channel numbers correspond to this plus and minus buttons here. It goes from channel zero all the way to 11. You can actually press and hold or just keep tapping. Over here, obviously, is your brightness intensity knob, which goes from 10% minimum in 1% increments all the way to 100%. And here is your color temperature that goes from 5600 Kelvin all the way down to 3200. And this button here controls several features such as the master, Wi-Fi, rotate, slave, and back to master, and also a Wi-Fi reset, just in case you forget your Wi-Fi password, in case you want to modify the username and the password, you can actually simply hold this for five seconds and it will automatically reset the password to the factory. So going back to the mode here in more detail, the master controls the light and all the lights. You can control freely the intensity of the light or the color temperature. And next is the Wi-Fi, which I'm going to be covering in detail later on. Now the rotate is a little complicated. I think it means when you want to temporarily uh, disconnect this light from the Wi-Fi or from the slave, so you can actually freely control your light intensity or your color temperature. And then you can actually just go to the Wi-Fi or the uh, master mode. Now next is the slave option, which can be controlled uh, from another light, either connected to the app on the Wi-Fi or set your master. So anything the other light is doing, this is going to respond exactly the same. Notice when the light is on slave, you cannot have any control on these knobs here. Also on the Wi-Fi, the same exact thing. These knobs, they don't work. You have to be either on rotate or on master. And here's the power switch right now. I'm on AC. If you want to switch to the V-mount, wait a little bit, turn it off, and then finally turn it on here to access the battery. You don't want to be doing this with the switch because you're going to be damaging this in no time. Now here I'm going to show you guys how to use the master slave feature here which is incredibly easy to do. So all you have to do is set one light to master and a bunch of other lights to slave as long as they are in the same channel as the one set to master. For example, right now I'm on channel zero and channel zero. I only have two of these lights. By the way, if I want to add any other GVM by color, it will work as long as it is set to the same exact group channel that I'm having the uh, master set up here. Every other light is going to behave exactly the same. So starting first with these two, you can actually control the intensity of the light. As you can see, there's a slight delay. This is usually how the GVM lights work, which is not a big deal. And also you can change the color temperature here. So everything you're doing with this light, this light is going to behave the same exact way. And again, you can actually add any other GVM by color. It will work as long as it is the same channel and everything else. Now let's say they have like 16 lights. As long as you set one to master on the same channel as everybody else, 
every single light is going to be doing exactly what this light is doing. Now, if you want to break it down to several different groups of lights, for example, two lights over here and four in the background, same exact procedure. For this two, you set this to master, this one to slave. This one here is going to be, I'm choosing channel zero, channel zero. And then for the other four lights, you choose any other channel other than the number zero and set one of them lights to master and the rest three to a uh, slave. And then you have one group here and one group there. It's that simple. As long as you change the channel name and have at least one light set to master on each different group, you have a bunch of lights controlling different things. The diffusion here that comes with this light is pretty decent to start as a key light, but this light panels I personally use to splash light in the backgrounds or light other objects because the key light I usually use my default large soft box with a grid and everything. But for key light, you probably will need even an extra diffusion, which is always great, especially that you want to make the light source bigger. So if you use any type of diffusion material here in front of this light, such as a uh, square diffuser or one of those translucent little foldable discs, anything that you put in front the light giving a little distance because the more distance between the light and the diffuser the more diffusion will happen and also the light source is going to be larger so it's always a better source to light a face as a key light when you have a greater uh, size of lighting now i'm going to be showing you guys in full detail step by step how to connect the gvm easily app with the slides over here since this tutorial is incredibly time consuming i already made several video tutorials in the past reviewing all the gvm lights so i'm going to be utilizing the gvm mb 830 bicolor LED as the source of the tutorial for this video which is the same exact thing so I'm gonna be uh, stealing a little bit of that video to show you guys here how the GVM easily apps work next step I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to connect any of these lights to the GVM app that they make the name of this app is called GVM easily which is also found on the manual on the internet or network session of the manual I strongly recommend you to read the manual but anyway the name is GVM easily so the first thing you want to do you go to the app store and here's the app right here make sure you install the app and then don't do anything yet then next thing you want to go to your settings on the phone and go to the wi-fi on the top should be your home network or office network that you logged in and then on the bottom here you will see the gvm 50rs and the GVM LED. The reason why the 50RS name is appearing as exactly says here on the bottom, the model of the light is because this app has also the capability of changing both the uh, network ID and whatever password they want. The default password is GVM underscore admin, everything low caps, okay? And the ID of the light is all high caps GVM underscore LED. This is how it appears here on the bottom. This is this light that I have not modified the Wi-Fi ID or the password. In case you forgot the password, you can simply press this button here for five seconds, press and hold. The whole thing is going to be reset to the same GVM LED or the GVM underscore admin password. Same exact thing with this light here, press and hold the same button for five seconds, everything is erased. So it will no longer be GVM 50RS, it's going to appear again as GVM LED, both lights on factory, okay? So this light over here, I already have my own password and I even changed the name ID to GVM50RS. If I reset the password here or if you reset the password of your light, you're going to get kicked out again from the network because you changed the name or the password. You know, makes sense? So if you change the password of your router, you're going to have to re-log in your iPhone with the new password and the new ID of your regular home network. It's the same exact procedure. So to show you, I'm going to forget this network completely then you get kicked out of the Wi-Fi and then just uh, go back one step here go to the Wi-Fi again on your phone and then here you go GVM LED appears and then tap on it and then enter the password which is everything low caps GVM underscore admin click join and there you go and now it's connected so then you go back to the app, GVM Easily. And then it says connecting. It should be connecting, but guess what's happening here? Some of you guys have a VPN and the VPN will never allow the connection to go through if you don't tell the VPN to add 
this network into the trusted network if your VPN is on, which my VPN is on all the time. So it's very important. If you don't have a VPN, don't worry about it. Your light will connect immediately. So to me, it's one more extra step. So let's go to my uh, secure line. I have an Avast here. Connection rules, trusted networks. The GVM LED is on the bottom. I click add. Look what happens now. I'm gonna actually quit the GVM easily, relaunch again, just in case I like doing that. And connecting. Connected. And then you do your color temperature here, your light intensity. This app, if you want to, you can actually either uh, make noises or vibrate, even turns it off. Everything is very responsive. Every time I launch this app, it works sometimes due to some things that the phone doing or the app is doing. All you have to do is quit the app and relaunch the app. Everything should go instantly online. See how fast that was? And the channels here on the app, you don't have to worry about it because channel 11, channel 7, everything works here. So I think the channels here is more for like slave or any other thing. I never understood why every channel works, but I only have one light. So whatever channel they have here, so you don't have to worry about that. All you have to do is uh, make sure your password and username is correct. As a matter of fact, all I did now is just to connect this light with the default factory ID and password from GVM, which you already know what the password and user ID is. Now, if you're happy with everything after connecting to the standard default GVM username and password login, you're good to go. Make sure you always connect it to the GVM Wi-Fi on your phone network, right? When you go to settings and make sure this network is on instead of your home network, otherwise the light will never connect, right? Now, if you wanna change either the password or the uh, Wi-Fi ID or both, make sure that as soon as you successfully do that, you're gonna get kicked out of the Wi-Fi because you made changes on the network. Same way if you change your router's password, every device on the network is gonna get kicked out. You gotta get the password back again, the new one, right? It's the same exact way. No. Uh, exception for this. Let's change everything. Let's change the user ID and password. Make sure you're still connected to the app. Everything is cool, okay? Now you go to the uh, system settings, which is the first option here, and then the fourth option down, modify Wi-Fi. And then I'm gonna change the default user ID, which is the high caps GVM underscore LED, all high caps. Since I have a bunch of these lights here, I just type the name and model of the light. So GVM underscore, no spaces guys, MB832. And my temporary password, just because of the video here is gonna be like GVM underscore AVP, which is art video. Click OK. Now this thing is gonna be thinking here. It's supposed to tell you here the uh, password has successfully modified, but I guess with the uh, latest updates, somehow it's not showing no more. So I have to guess if it was successful or if it wasn't. Then I gotta go back to the settings and then it was successful. GVM MB832, password. There you go, you change your Wi-Fi ID name and also the password and my security says everything is cool. We'll let you know if something changes. And then you go to your GVM Easily app and then connect it. And make sure you are connected to the lights Wi-Fi, whether you change, whatever name they change, make sure you connect it to the light and not your home network because it will never connect to the app. Then launch your app again and it should connect like that. Boom. But if you have a VPN, it's going to be a little bit of a pain, but this is what VPNs do. So right now I have this light exactly one meter from my projection screen. Just to give you guys a quick reference here, how bright you need the light to be, depending on your needs for your production. So what I'm going to be doing here is measuring in f-stops, which is a language that everybody can understand, especially when you're shooting behind the, uh, the camera screen there. This is what I'm going to be shooting as f-stops, not in lux, because if I tell you this light is like 71.4 lux brighter than the other light, I mean, nobody knows unless we have a color spectrometer and use that particular number, whatever number that is, as a point of reference. So let's stick with the f-stops, which is a, something that everybody can understand. So this light now is going to be at full blast. I have the diffuser on, 
one meter away from this projection screen and it's reading about f8 pretty much and now we're going to be removing the diffuser and now we have a reading of f11.11 and a half which is almost f16 yeah, 11 and a half now with the diffuser panel applied at 100%, the reading is f5, 6 and a half. I'm going to be setting this light to 4200 degrees Kelvin, which all LED lights are going to be on. Without the diffuser panel, we're going to have pretty much f16.2, which is pretty bright. And given the fact that this is set to uh, ISO 800 at 30 frames per second, with the diffuser back on, we're getting a reading of f8 and a half. At 4200, we're looking at almost uh, F8. So that's all I got for this review. If lighting is your thing, please consider subscribing to this channel because all we do here, 90% is about lighting equipment. And if you want to leave comments, uh, please do because I love comments. I respond to everything that I see there. And also, if you want to give me a thumbs up, that tells me that I'm doing a good job here. It's also good for the YouTube algorithm. So anyway, thank you very much for taking the time watching this video and uh, see you next time.